Official partners in tour with all the delicious refreshments and all the and I won't be here so but you can still come and um, if anybody is interested um, just a little reminder if you would like to sponsor any refreshments for partners in Torah there's still plenty of weeks ahead till the end of the year when New Year is starting so we're starting the new year we have a whole year ahead of us uh, we also, you know, obviously you can dedicate it to anything you'd like, and we also are looking for speakers. So if any of you would like to share what you've been learning with your partner, we are excited to hear about it. It's only for like five minutes, just a little bit to share with us about what you've been learning. Um, so if you're interested, just let me know. I'm trying to make my rounds and try to push people into it. But if I haven't reached you yet, you can come over to me and let me know. Um, I'll be thrilled and everyone will be happy to hear it as well. And tonight we have a special speaker coming from outside of partners, our little partners into our community. Well, actually big partners into our community. Um, so I first of all want to thank Feige Trepp for agreeing to come and speak tonight. And as a token of our appreciation, which is something that we will be doing for future speakers as well. She is going to be receiving a present from all of us at Torch. So, Feige, please come up here. Accept your present. Wow. That is for you. Thank you very much, Feige, for coming to speak. She's 
is very brave, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Awesome. So I have to say, first of all, you guys are like so inspiring, and I'm so excited to Stand be here. Microphone. And and I was so excited to see you. It wasn't like I agreed. I was so excited. And okay, okay, here we go. Okay, in this week's very bad at speaking microphones, but I'll try. In this week's parsha, parsha Tzvi, what happens? Yaakov is about to pass away, he's about to leave the world, and what does he do before he leaves the world? He calls all of his children, and he wants to give each of them a blessing before it's time for him to leave the world. All of his children get brachos, all of his children get blessings, except three. Three children do not receive blessings. Reuven, Shimon, and Levi. He calls over Reuven, and he tells him, Reuven, you were supposed to be king, you were supposed to be, have malchus, you were supposed to have kahuna. But because you moved the bed, Yaakov's bed was meant to be with Rachel's tent, but he moved it to his mother's tent, he moved it to Leah. Because of that, you, you're not going to be king or you're not going to be a priest. You lose them both. And that's what he received from Yaakov. The next two children, Shimon and Levi, he calls them both. And what does he tell them? Because both of you plotted to kill your brother Yosef, both of you, you will not receive blessings either. And not just that, you're not going to get a piece of land in Israel. All the brothers each have a portion of land of Israel, but Shimon and Levi do not have a portion. They are scattered throughout the land. Why? Because both of them plotted to kill Yo Yosef. The next brother, Yehuda, comes. Yehuda is the first one to receive a bracha. His bracha is that he will be king. He's like a lion. He's strong. And all the other brothers receive a blessing. But why does Yehuda receive a blessing? If you think about it, Yehuda also did a terrible avera. Yehuda also did a terrible sin. He saw a beautiful woman, Tamar, and he had an affair with her. So why does he receive a blessing? And Reuven, Shimon, and Levi, because of their sin, they don't receive a blessing. That's not fair. So what's going on here? So if you look at the story with Yehuda and Tamar, what was the actual story? Afterwards, Yehuda admitted out loud. He said, I'm sorry, I did an avera. And he, what he did was he did tshuva. He repented out of love. He didn't just do tshuva, but he did it through love. And because of that, not just did it have his avera get erased, but his avera, his sin, turned into an actual mitzvah. How does that work? If you think about it, if you take a piece of paper and you, with a pencil you make a line, and then you take an eraser, and you can spend hours and hours erasing that line, what's going to happen? Will that line ever disappear? It will never disappear, it will always be there. Why? Because if we do an action, no matter what, it's always gonna be there. The pencil mark, no matter how many hours we spend erasing it, it's always gonna be there. Because that's the way the world works. But God says no, in my world it's different. I'm gonna give you something special called tshuva, called repenting. And that is, if, you ever, if we ever do an action, and we repent, we do tshuva through love, what happens, not just does that Avera disappear, not just does it get totally erased, but that Avera actually turned into a mitzvah. That thing that we did against Hashem, that made us go further away from Hashem, not just does it get erased, but it makes us soar and get closer to Hashem. So that's the fascinating lesson that Yehuda and Yaakov teach us. Although Yehuda did a terrible, terrible Avera, he admitted out loud, he apologized in front of everyone. And he did tshuva out of love. He repented out of love. And each of us, God created us human. Like, each of us make mistakes. And God knows that. And each of us, sometimes we carry burdens with us. Because we know we did some things and we feel bad about it. But Yehuda and Yaakov and Hashem teach us, we don't have to carry it with us. We could do tshuva. We could repent with love. And through that, through our virus that we did, we can even get closer to Hashem. So... I have to say, you're very, very inspiring. I love being here, and you guys are all amazing, especially with Habibah.